feel like it's important for us to be out in our backyard. A group of Garland teens team up with the city's code compliance department to give up a week of their summer vacation to give back to the community. And have you ever been curious about what some of the companies in Garland are all about? We'll give you some insight as we kick off our new feature, Made in Garland. And today we're here celebrating their historical neighborhood. Plus, for the first time, a Garland neighborhood receives a historic designation by the city council. We'll tell you where. That and much more on this episode of Garland Spotlight. Hi, I'm Trillina Pollard. Welcome to Garland Spotlight, where we shine our spotlight on the people, programs, and places that make our city a great place to live, work, and play. We kick off with an awesome program sponsored by the Garland Police Department. It's called the Great Summer Camp, and it's a three week long event for middle school students from across the city. Go! Okay, the summer camp program has been going on for about 20 years. Each of the officers that you see here are school resource officers. We each have a campus at a middle school or a high school, and what we do is we invite five or six kids from each campus for every camp that we have. We have three camps every summer, and they last about two and a half weeks each. Come on, Stacy. And what we do is we bring in about 30 kids per camp, and the camp we do an emphasis on safety and um, basically trying to talk to them about being leaders on campus. Go! We take them skating, we take them bowling, we go to the zoo, we take tours of the ballpark in Arlington, American Airlines Center. We try to, we usually have about three field, four, three or four field trips a, a week, and we try to keep it fun for those kids and take them places that they normally wouldn't get to go. Oh. 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 They, take us, they take us places where um, sometimes I haven't been, like they took us to Celebration Station last Thursday, I haven't been there. I mean, if uh, anyone asks me what I do over summer, I can tell them I've been to all these places and hang out with them. Yeah, and stuff. Now we can take the tires off and it can run just on the track itself. Pull the tires on it and kind of work them together. And today we have the bomb unit out here uh, doing demonstrations with their robots and their bomb suit and things like that, talking to them about what they do here at the police department. Y'all have seen one of our tools that we're able to use. We send in a robot when we don't have to send in a person. Why do we do that? So, you can buy another robot. Exactly. Right. I don't mind losing a robot. I don't want to lose my buddy. Well, there, you get to learn that there is a bomb squad in Garland, and there's neat things that they do to um, ensure our safety, and what they use to protect themselves, and how they can detonate bombs or keep our city safe. Okay, this is heavy too. Be prepared for it. I don't want your neck to fall back and you hurt yourself. Well, Garland Police Department was one of the first police departments to have a school resource officer program in the state of Texas. Man. And um, for us, when we started that program, we saw a need for um, an activity to keep the kids out of trouble and um, talk to them about you know being leaders on campus things like that during the summertime so we do a summer program because most of the time when a police officer shows up at somebody's house whether it's you know some kind of an emergency usually something bad's happening oh, we gotta calm down. but as school resource officers we develop relationships with our kids because we see them every day You learn how to stay out of trouble, you learn new things, how to keep yourself safe, how to keep others safe, what to do when you're in a tr um, troubling situation. You get you out of that from getting hot. I want to I want to tell you. I want to tell you. A lot of these kids are underprivileged and they don't have the money. This camp is 100% free for every kid. The officers raise money during the school year to make sure that all the activities that we do, we pay for it. So they don't have to do anything but bring a lunch every once in a while. And it's important for us to make sure that we um, provide them some fun activities and try to build relationships that will last a lifetime. And then, you know, when they get back to campus, then they can be the model student and help others kind of become better students also. They're nice, they're fun. Um, they they uh, set up all kinds of games for us. They do a lot of, I'm thankful for them because they do all this for us, so. You're going to find that it's now a little bit easier to get from 635 to Centerville Road. It's the beginning of a long list of proposed improvements along LBJ in Garland. A ribbon cutting ceremony was recently held for the $10 million project. This is a momentous occasion 
We have a wonderful new service road open and doing a great job for us here in Garland. And as we cut this ribbon, you'll see cars going by instantly. About six years ago, if you were trying to exit on the Centerville from 635, you would line up in a line of cars. And then once you finally got to Centerville, you couldn't even get the Northwest Highway without taking back streets and everything. So opening up the service road, working with TxDOT, the city together have been able to actually put in access to what we call the Centerville Marketplace area. So this is very important. It's, it's first for safety and second for commercial reasons, but it'll do a lot to uh, increase the traffic flow here and make things flow a lot better and certainly reduce the congestion problems that we were experiencing at this particular intersection. You know, as I look at across the deal, Bill Dollar and Martin and, and the city council and the mayor, you know, your leadership on transportation, your vision, you taking a step out and taking a proactive approach on transportation, that's what makes these things uh, so successful. Well, this, this is emblematic of what we hope will be uh, done in the future. Uh, we know that frontage roads are important. Uh, 635 was built a, in a lot of sections without adequate service roads. It was built a long time ago. It was built across a bunch of open fields and, and the world's changed. Um, the cities of both Dallas and Mesquite and Garland have grown out to 635, each from our different directions. And this will be, uh, this is a test or an example of what the changing the, the infrastructure will do. But more importantly for us on 635 East is to uh, change the intersections at Skillman, at Garland Road and Northwest Highway and change the intersection here at Centerville so it actually handles traffic much better than what was designed almost 50 years ago. The city of Garland has stepped up and taken the leadership role in this, in this project and Mayor John, uh, BJ and now Billy Mack, um, there's a lot of weight on your shoulders and we appreciate what you're doing. Right? Yeah. Ready? Go. Yay. Thank you all. This, uh, as the Metroplex continues to grow and between now and 2030, 2040, uh, there's a good chance that we'll grow 50 to 100% more throughout the, the region. And for the uh, traffic demands that we'll see on the east side of the Metroplex, if we don't take on this project, uh, we're gonna have all kinds of problems and it's gonna affect growth, not only to Garland, but to Mesquite, to Dallas, but much further to Faith, to uh, Princeton. Uh, it's gonna be very significant in how this side of the Metroplex handles traffic. The improvements represent a larger transportation plan to reconstruct and reconfigure 635 from US 75 to I-30. And while the city continues to push for work along the 635 corridor, it's also working to improve our neighborhoods. Recently, Garland City Council created its first historically designated district near the city center. When I was elected last year, about that same time, there was discussion about demolishing two old houses and just, I was afraid that we were not really paying attention to our history. It's our history as, of Garland that makes us different. No one else can have our history except us. One of the things that I am really proud of is neighborhoods and neighborhood associations. And this one is one of the best and the oldest one in District 2 and of Garland. And today we're here celebrating their historical neighborhood because they're registered now as a historical neighborhood. And it's just, it's amazing that when you really pay attention how fast you can actually start marking your place in history and recognizing what it is and that 100 years from now, we'll look back and have a better understanding of where we came from 100 years ago, simply because we took time this year to put some uh, stakes in the ground and mark those points. But and this is some people that took on their own to improve their neighborhood, and they did. And they got all the neighbors involved, and they got a petition signed 100% everyone on the street signed their petition. I remember when it, when it was a full-fledged neighborhood and city council keeps talking about we've got to rebuild the population in the old downtown, in old downtown area, yet I remember when there were houses everywhere. When people lived here and when the square was totally functional, where all the businesses were going full steam, uh, and it's, it's unfortunate that so many of the homes have been torn down, the city had no way to stop them. We had no, no laws, no ordinances. We had nothing in place. What's that mean to you to have this designation here now? Uh, it's a dream come true. 
It's something that we would have wanted uh, when we first came here. We thought this was a very, very historic neighborhood. This was a, a neighborhood that was very important to, to Garland. Uh, this street produced three mayors, five city council members, presidents of a number of Garland banks, a number of very successful Garland business people. This is a very small area, but when you look at who all came out of it, uh, and, and uh, I mean, it's an honor for the, those people. We try to to uh, honor their memories, uh, honor the, the history that went on here. And whereas the city of Garland congratulates the residents of the Travis College Hill Edition and the work that they have put into their homes and into the newly designated district, and looks to them to serve as models for future historic designations in the community, and now therefore I, Douglas Athens, Mayor of the City of Garland, together with the City Council, on May 31, 2014, designate Travis College Hill Edition Historical Day in Garland, but I, Texas. I think the ball is rolling. This mayor really cares about historical preservation. This city council cares about historical preservation. There are enough of us now who are motivated and activists that I, at least we've got the ball rolling. Our city has more than 40 different departments, one of which is stormwater management. What exactly do they do? We'll show you in our latest installment of Now You Know. What is stormwater management? The stormwater department was developed based upon a mandated federal program put in place to help reduce the amount of stormwater pollutants entering into our local waters. Each year the city has to submit a report documenting different activities conducted in order to meet the requirements of the stormwater permit. While a permit is specific to the stormwater department, the efforts taken to obtain it are contributed by multiple departments. The health department is charged with one of the most important, our drinking water. To keep our water as pure as possible, a field crew is sent out in search of different locations in an effort to find any illicit discharges. Once a discharge is found, they will take a sampling of the water, where they then test for pollutants such as copper and detergent. But the real goal is to stop the pollution before it even reaches our creeks and waterways. And that's where the engineering department takes over. Erosion control inspections are regularly performed on all construction sites. Here, a field engineer will inspect the site and determine what precautions need taken in order to control the runoff and reduce the sediments from entering to our stormwater drainage system. Also on the preventative side is the street department. Street sweepers are deployed daily to reduce pollutants from our street surfaces. But the street department isn't bound to just our streets. They also maintain and monitor the creeks and waterways. Here they must locate and remove any built-up debris that could cause serious drainage problems during heavy rain events, such as large trees or litter. Not only does the stormwater department try to prevent and treat for water pollutants, but they also educate. A huge effort is put into educating the public about the hazards of stormwater pollution, because 90% of that pollution can be prevented through proper knowledge. School presentations and civic events like the Healthy Living Expo and Trash Bash are put on every year in order to increase the knowledge about stormwater pollutants, which in return will ultimately decrease the pollution. So in a nutshell, what is stormwater management? It consists of federal and state permit compliance, maintenance activities, construction control measures, stormwater monitoring, industrial and commercial inspection, and public education and outreach. Stormwater management, now you know. To learn more about keeping our waterways clean, just visit our website at garlandtx.gov. Now, did you know that the city of Garland has more than 2,000 employees working together to make our city a better place to live? Well, when we're not working, many of us are volunteering in several organizations across the city. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? Good, how are y'all? With many worthy organizations and opportunities in the area, employees with the City of Garland are actively involved in the community and regularly volunteer their time to assist a variety of causes. 
the city has always been the, the one of our largest supporters, not only with volunteers, but they've always helped us with all of the needs. This is certainly a worthwhile organization providing services to individuals in the community who are definitely in need. We have assisted them with their retail store, preparing materials for each week of sale. It's thousands of hours that they've given us over the years. Um, just this year alone, I bet it's over a thousand hours just at the retail store. That has nothing to do with the hours they give us when we have events. We have employees who assist at uh, our animal shelter. We have employees assisting at uh, Salvation Army and many other venues throughout the community. Another volunteer opportunity is the city tutoring program. The city partners with one of the schools here in Garland and uh, we tutor students throughout the year and getting them ready for their tests. At the end of the school year, the students are rewarded with a field day and arts and crafts with their tutor. We have approximately 30 employees who assist with that program every year and, and we have certainly been uh, grateful to have the school partner with us on many occasions. I think that the community likes to see that its employee, the city employees are involved in their community as well, not just a job but also giving back to the community. The city of Garland is an employer in the community of Garland. So as much as we are part of the Garland community as a workforce, we should also be part of the Garland community, show the community we're here for them, with them. Volunteerism is a big part of the way in which we operate. We're a very lean and mean organization, so we rely a lot on volunteers to help us in all of our activities. A group of Garland teens also gave up a week of their summer vacation to give back to the community. They teamed up with the city's code compliance department to help homeowners make repairs they could not do on their own. Good for now. All right. Let me know when you're out. We'll... We work with Code Cares of Garland, and we help uh, people get back into code through paint and through wood wood repair and some window repair and things like that. So that's what we're doing today. We need to knock this thing out before that sun comes out and gets us. We have some people that are connected through the city and through Code Cares, and it's just been uh, it's been a blessing through us, and it's just something that kind of fell in our lap, and that's why we use Code Cares. So I need to do this, and then I'll be done. Okay. That's our outreach program and what that program is basically designed to do is just connect people who need work done under their houses, who can't afford it or, you know, or just have some kind of handicap or illness, uh, people, that, people that want to help them do the work. And we've been very successful over the years. We've helped hundreds of people uh, throughout the city. Yes, we've got tons of kids working. Um, they've got about five or six houses they're painting right now and additionally they're doing about eight trimming jobs throughout the city too. So. A lot, of, uh, a lot of feet on the ground. So Mission Garland is a mission trip that we, students from all around the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we come out, we're, well, we're the youth members of New World. We go out and we help people like in our own backyard. It started because we thought, oh, we go out and help other people, but why not do it like to the people in our community? We don't know what our next Jeez. task will be. They're critical to what we do here. Um, Garland has got an aging population. Um, a lot of our seniors just can't do this kind of work anymore, and, and this is a good place for these volunteers to step up and give back. I think I have a really close connection with my church, and it's something, it's with everyone here. It's just this special bond. Yeah, our kids, uh, they give up a lot of things, uh, football during the summer, basketball, because they want to be out here. They want to help people, and that's they have a heart, they have a passion for it. Well, it's important for us. It's a mission. Our mission of our church is connect, grow, and serve, and it's part of the serve aspect and part of giving back to the community because they are so blessed in their lives, and they have to give back in order to really, truly understand them. Well, we've been working with New World United Methodist Church for about five years now, and they are a fantastic group of people to work with. Um, they come out every summer and ask us how many projects they can do for us, and um, they normally do about five or six for summer. And I think working together with them, it's better than sitting at home or, I don't know, playing some video games. If your group would like to volunteer in the city's Code Cares program, call 972 485-6420 or visit garlandtx.gov. Have you ever driven by one of Garland's many businesses and wondered what they do? Well, to ease your curiosity, we're kicking off a new feature, Made in Garland. Our first edition takes us inside Atlas Copco. Atlas Copco Drilling Solutions. This is our global headquarters in Garland, Texas. 
Uh, we build uh, blast hole drills for mining. That's the largest part of our business. We also build uh, oil and gas drills and water well drills. We build in three different countries, in India, China, and here in Garland, Texas. Most of our drills that we ship globally are built here in Garland. On the mining side, we sell to the largest mining companies in the world, companies like uh, BHP, Rio Tinto, Newmont Gold, uh, Barrick Gold. So these are really large mining companies around the world. Uh, they have operations that are very remote, so they come and work with us to both engineer the product and then to assemble it the way they need it. So we, uh, we work very closely with the, with the customers globally. Since late 70s, this, this facility has been here. Uh, it was acquired by Atlas Copco in 2004, so the Atlas, as an Atlas Copco business, it's been here uh, about 10 years. The second phase of the city's downtown redevelopment project is in full swing. Here's what's happening right now and what to expect in the near future. Progress on the city center project in downtown Garland is quickly becoming more visibly evident. The existing facade on the north side of City Hall has been removed and crews will soon begin installing the new skin as well as foundation work for the new CGTV studio on the south side of the building. The Oaks multifamily portion of the development is taking shape and is scheduled to open in 2015. Now drainage and other infrastructure work along State Street near the rail line and between 5th and 3rd Streets will soon begin. Meanwhile work on the exterior refurbishment of the historic rail car and Heritage Crossing will wrap up in September. Downtown patrons will notice a new green space where the old Garland Power and Light administrative offices once stood at the corner of State and 5th Streets. Once the new grass is established, that space will be open for the public to enjoy. Recently, the Cultural Arts Commission approved a new entryway design for the Austin Street entrance to the Granville Arts Center. Construction is scheduled to begin in the fourth quarter of this year. For more information about this project and the latest updates, visit the city's website and click on the Downtown Redevelopment button. And finally, a group of Garland IT employees got together to collect items for Garland's Animal Services Department. From food to toys to everything in between, these items help make the animals stay at the shelter a bit more comfortable. For us to be able to do what we need to do, and for everyday operations, we need, we need to have more donations. Um, not everything we have comes in like we need it to, so this, this helps out a lot. We decided that we wanted to pick one of the Garland's uh, nonprofit organizations and see what they, they needed and try to make a collection within our department and help them out. We need food. We need these items to help everyday operations. If you can volunteer, we ask that you do. Uh, it helps out. It's able to, you know, get things taken care of. It's not something that's, you know, easy to do. It's, it's something we need help with doing. And uh, whatever we can have, and volunteers, uh, if you want to bring donations, whatever you'd like to do, it's, it'll help out. You also can help both through donations and volunteering your time. Just go to garlandanimalservices.org for more information about how you can make a difference for these animals. And with that, we wrap up another episode of Garland Spotlight, where we focus our spotlight on the people, places, and programs that make Garland a great place to live, work, and play. Want daily updates on what's going on here in Garland? All you have to do is like us on Twitter or Facebook, or you can sign up for our weekly Garland e-news. Just go to garlandtx.gov. For Garland Spotlight, I'm Trillina Pollard.